Hidden True Crime podcast. And Tony Bruski is the host of the podcast Hidden Killers with Tony Bruski. Hello to both of you. Thank you for being here on this Friday <laughs> night. Let's get right to it, shall we? I want to start with yes. the yes. case murder that happened in um, Winter Park, uh, Florida. We have two opposing views, you guys, on this one. First one comes from Casey Kopp in Los Angeles. She has some thoughts about Sarah Boone, who is accused of the suitcase killing, who left, uh, you know, allegedly left her boyfriend to die and taunted him while videotaping it. And then Patricia Yeo in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, feels a little differently about what went on. So here are both of their videos, and I'll ask you about them on the other side. Hey, Ashley. Okay, I've got thoughts on the Sarah Boone case. First thought, this is wild. This is so bizarre. Some people are crazy. Um, but here's my thought. I think she might be found innocent. And I think that's mainly because, like, there's no way that she could have forced him into the suitcase if he was, like, fully conscious. Like, no one could force me to get inside of suitcase. So I'm thinking he had to crawl in the suitcase. Very unfortunate that maybe she got too drunk and forgot about him. But I don't know. She might be found innocent. It's wild, though. Hi, Ashley. Uh, yeah, Sarah Boone is guilty, guilty, guilty. She knew exactly what she was doing when she zipped Jorge up in that suitcase. And he begged her for help, and she ignored him and laughed. It's all on video, too. So uh, this case should be a slam dunk for any jury. Oh, my gosh, I love it. That's what jurors say. That's what jurors do. They have these discussions just like that. Okay, Tony, weigh in. Who's right? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, I mean, with something like this, uh, clearly both of them were not uh, making any sense of what they were doing. Playing hide and seek, locking someone in a suitcase. Um, I think it's just a tale of two people uh, inebriated, making very poor decisions, and one with an angst against the other. And it ended up turning into a very dark, dark situation. Okay, Lauren, I'm going to get you to comment on this next one about Lori Vallow. Tara in Chicago has a few thoughts about the doomsday mom. Here she is. Hey, Ashley, I know Lori Vallow's defense team is trying to have the death penalty dropped on grounds that she was declared mentally incompetent in both 2021 and 2022, but she has since been declared fit for trial. I believe that the entire mental illness defense is completely a farce. She is a con artist. She has been in control of her actions from day one, from the moment that she had convinced her brother to kill her ex-husband to the moment that she started spewing all of these outrageous lies about light individuals and zombies to covering up the deaths of her own children. I believe that she should be held to the fullest extent of the law and that there definitely needs to be justice for both Tylee and Joshua immediately. All right, Lauren, what do you think about what Tara said? Yeah, it's interesting what Tara said. I think she feels like m much of the country does. I think the ultimate question is, while Idaho doesn't have an insanity plea and she has been found competent to stand trial, I think the, the question that this trial is going to revolve around is, what at what point do extreme beliefs become mental illness? I mean, is our religious beliefs, uh, do they equate being mentally ill? Or how extreme do beliefs have to get? Because I think to some point, she believed this, right? So I think that's mm -hmm. that's the question here. That's a good one. I'm going to leave the last word to Courtney Kolinsky in Nashville, Tennessee. This is what she has to say about the Idaho murders. Take a listen. Hey, Ashley, how are you? Um, I've been thinking a lot about the students that were murdered in Idaho and how the murderer Brian is now coincidentally being um, defended by a woman. And he's talked very badly about women. You can tell he has mom issues. You can tell that he does not like women. So what do you feel about that? How do you feel he feels about repre being represented by a woman? Is it going to show in trial how much he despises women? Is he going to even listen to this attorney because she is a woman? I just find it kind of ironic that now a woman is defending him. So what do you think? Oh, Courtney, I think you are smart to make that connection. And Lauren Mathias and Tony Bruski, you are the smartest. And thank you so much for giving me some of your time on this Friday night. By the way, Tony, you get 
all the awards for your backdrop game. It is stunning. <laughs> Love Thank it. you. Absolutely. Yes. I want to visit. <laughs> Thank I'm you, guys. <laughs> I love it. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. And by the way, people keep your theories coming. I love it, but just keep them under 30 seconds because I want to get more of you on there. It's at Banfield Tips at NewsNationNow.com. Just send them in. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.